I wanted a natural look, natural stone, but look at these huge grout joints. Hey there, have you thought about adding a stone mosaic tile to your next project? But maybe you're a little unsure about how those mosaic sheets fit together and they all look different. And let's be frank, you've seen some bad installations out there. This video is to help you make good decisions and help you through some of the uniqueness of this amazing product and to get you started off on the right foot for your next stone mosaic, river rock, or pebble installation. If you don't know me, my name is Craig and I've been in the tile industry for over 20 years and I've seen just about every installation there is and I will say river rocks and those pebbles have not been my favorite in the past, but I've learned some tricks along the way that I want to share with you so hopefully you will come out with a great installation. Most of these stones in River Rock are stunning. They're amazing, but they're not like the ceramic mosaics that maybe you're used to that are perfectly square. The joints are all the same. These are random. They're mounted on a sheet, most of the time in an irregular pattern. Sometimes those sheets are made to lay together and fit uh, seamlessly. Sometimes you have to adjust them, but never fear. We're here to help kind of coach you through how to look at the tile you've selected and choose the right process to set them so that the finished product will be amazing. So as you get ready to set your product, take a look at it. You may have a product like this that is kind of stiff. It's on a sheet. It's uh, not terribly pliable. The stones are really tight together and it's got a scalloped edge. Or you could have a material like this that's kind of all over the place. It's not falling apart yet, but uh, it is a very different installation process. The key for any good tile installation is a dry layout. So you want to take the tiles, the sheets, out of the box and see how they work together. Is it a scalloped edge and how is it supposed to interlock with the other sheets? Is it an irregular edge and there's really no rhyme or reason to it? Mix the material between boxes and see how they fit together. Do they fit really tight and snug together? Then you're in good shape, you can continue on. But often these tiles, since they are natural stone, they're mounted to a sheet, sometimes they don't fit together the way they should. So let's do this in a dry lay and figure out our procedure and what we're gonna do next and how we're gonna finish this room so that you don't see the individual sheets, you've got tight grout joints, and everything is as the manufacturer has intended it. If the tiles don't fit together perfectly, that doesn't mean you have a defective run or series. It just means you may have to do a little bit extra work to get the joints tight and to where they're not noticeable once the installation is complete. There are a few different ways to do this, and let's walk through each. The first one is probably the least appealing that we're gonna talk about. It may be that you have a small installation and that the sheets don't fit together well at all, and you want a really tight pebble floor. The best way to achieve that is to actually remove the pebbles from the sheet and install them one at a time. Now, I don't recommend this often, but if you have a small area or a shower or something that's really easy to do and the stones are large and come off the sheet easily, this can give you a really great tight installation. In my opinion, this is an artistic approach to this installation where you can make some designs and really get creative with the stone mosaics that you've purchased. Another option, and the one that I recommend the most, is just doing some edge adjustments on your sheets. Now, if you've got a tile that has a repeating edge, it is possible that you can offset one sheet from another and break up one of the two joints, either vertical or horizontal. And really, you just want your eye to not be able to follow a line. Now, you've broken up one line if it's available. Now, you gotta take care of the other. 
The best way i found to do that is set it as tight as possible. And if you're seeing a joint there, you may want to break off or cut loose some of the edge pieces of stone. Adjusting those inward to each other to close that gap stops your eye from seeing that line and therefore over the installation you do not notice the sheets. While researching this topic, I found one installer that kind of combined a little bit of that. Uh, he had a stone mosaic sheet and what he did is he intentionally left a gap between all of the sheets, which seems odd, but what he then did is took loose stones and filled in those gaps. The critical part of this is you set your tiles, you leave a gap that's a little bit wider than the stone. And if the stones come off the sheets really well, you set those, leave your gap, and then fill in those gaps with the loose stones. And then it's nearly impossible to see the individual sheets. A uh, little side note, if you're using your river rock or your stone pebbles for a shower installation, keep in mind these are not flat most of the time. And because there's so much grout, you may want to increase the pitch of your shower so that your water can flow easily out of it. If the pitch is too shallow, you may see puddles and things standing in your shower, which is never attractive. So keep that in mind as a little shower pebble stone installation knowledge nugget. We figured all that out. Now it's time to spread the mortar and get to installing. Most of these sheets are gonna be installed with a small notch trowel. A quarter by quarter notch trowel I have found is the most common. Just be careful, do a couple of test sets and make sure the thin set is not coming up into the grouted area between the stones. That can make a really big mess and because these joints are very irregular, it's gonna be hard to clean. Okay, now that you've got your mortar on the ground, you still are gonna have to play with this stone a little bit. Especially if you have one of those loose sheets like I showed you before. The stone moves around a little bit. Once you kind of flop it into place using whatever technique you like best, just be careful the sheet doesn't fold under and you're pulling thin set up. It can be a mess. But once the sheet is in your mortar ridges, then you wanna make sure you get a full bond. So you're taking your grout float or a beading block and you're really pressing those stones in there because you want that bond to be really solid. And since these stones are mounted to a mesh, you don't want the mesh to hold the stone down, you want the mortar. Pull up a couple of those pieces, just take a look at the coverage, make sure you've got mortar coverage on your stone. If you have some stones that fall off during the process, just stick them back down. Maybe you want to get a little bit of mortar to put on it to make sure it's there. Put a piece of tape on it so it doesn't move. This is stone. So the next step is grout release or pre-sealing your tile. No matter what grout you're using, odds are the stones or river rocks or pebbles are porous and it will suck up the pigment in your grout. So you want to make sure you're doing a good procedure on using your grout release or pre-sealing your tile. If you need to know how to do that, I've got a video. And if you're getting great information off this, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, I know you haven't. It doesn't cost anything. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Now you're ready to grout. Grouting these things can be a mess. A lot of stones, especially some of the rounded larger stones, it's very tricky to get the grout correct. You want your grout about midway these round stones, not all the way up to where it looks like a sea of grout with a little stone poking above like an alligator's eyes, but you wanna be able to see those pebbles. That's what you paid for. Be careful with your grout. Make sure you're grouting correctly using proper procedures. Once again, there's a video on the channel for that also. You're getting that grout from the top of the stone all the way down to the substrate, packing it in tight. Then follow your normal grouting procedures. Okay, do you feel better about that now? Do you feel like you have some context to where you can get your river rock or pebbles installed and have a great looking installation? If not, I wanna hear your comments. Put them down below, send me a question. I'll be glad to answer it for your specific installation. The next thing you need to do is right here. 
and I picked it out just for you. So make sure you watch that and don't forget, let's keep learning together and tile the world. Yeah.